the deep, dark depths. Ah, oh, what lurks beneath. Well, hello there, my friends. Welcome back to the Scott Reed Project. As in the water, as you can see. Can you make that out? Uh, found one of my traps that went missing. Crayfish traps. It's hanging off my kit. So, the reason I'm here is to pick some wild garlic. It's wild garlic season. Absolutely perfect ingredients. I want to make some more wild garlic sausages, add a bit of chilli, absolutely superb. But first of all, we need to pick some. So looking around then, no shortage here. I'm just going to go up a little bit further to see if I can find my second trap as well. I mean, they've been floating in the breeze, man, for months. It's just been too deep. But spring is sprung. One of my favourite times of the year, if it's looking so luscious, give it another couple of weeks and England will be looking its finest. Right, we'll pick us some of that on the way back, but I'm going to go and have a mosey up river, up river, upstream. Safe to say there's enough to go round there. What I'll do is I'll pick me some, we'll get back and we'll wash it off and make those lovely pork and chilli oh, sausages. Super, super seasonal. What a beautiful place. So I've been working on the SRP HQ. Look how posh it looks now, hey? Some steps, a handrail by my man Ollie, a bay tree, got a sun called bay, no relation. And yeah, and quite literally just been getting it ready for when I have some customers come to do some buttery masterclasses, obviously get some proper electric sorted, but yeah, have a look through the window. This is where the magic happens. Wow, my friends, we're back here in the SRP HQ. And how cool does it look from the outside? It's like a TARDIS, man. You come in here and there's loads of room. Anyway, we're here to make these wild garlic and chilli sausages. And I will say from the start, this is most probably the most amazing sausage in my repertoire. The flavour and the taste is absolutely superb. Now you may have seen me do my uh, pork and wild garlic sausages on their own, but with the addition of these beautiful chili flakes, it really takes it to another dimension. So, the star of the show, obviously the lovely, lovely wild garlic. It's like some hipster bouquet. So we're gonna use some of that. Not sure yet, we'll play it by ear. But what I am sure of is the usual suspects, I've got three and a half pound of pork. As you can see here, it's belly and a few odds and ends. It's just the perfect meat for sausage making. I've got half a pound of rusk, sausage making rusk. And then two seasons, two seasons? <laughs> two ounces of my favorite sausage seasoning. Now you can use whatever sausage seasoning you like. If you've got a preference or a favorite, just use that. Then of course, we're gonna have about a pint and a half, two pints of ice cold water that I've had chilling in the fridge. Like I said before in all my sausage making videos, it's all about temperature and keeping everything as cold as possible. So first thing, I need to get my rusk on to soak so it can take up all that water. So as you may or may not know, rusk can take up to two times, sometimes three times its weight in water. We got half a pound there. So I'm gonna go with a pound and a half of water, which 
very conveniently works out a pint and a half. So there's a pint of ice cold water. Now you always add the rusk to the liquid, you get a better absorption rate. So in, and in with our rusk, and we just wanna leave that until it inflates. This rusk, the binder, people can't get their head round it. We've been making our sausages with rusk for years. There's nothing nefarious about it. It retains all that flavor, all the juices, all that fat, gives you a good texture. It's a win-win. You know, there's no nasses in it. It is just a yeastless bread mix. And I know my friends over in the US can't get it. So if you look in the comments, you'll see a link to a video where I show you how to make it yourselves. Now look at that, it looks quite liquid. You give that 10, 15, 20 minutes and that will have puffed up and it's still got room in there to hold on to all that lovely fat. There's nothing worse when you cook a sausage and all that beautiful fat, fatted flavor leaches out into the pan. This retains it in your banger. Right, let's move that over there, let it do its thing. So onto my meat then, this lovely belly. I'm just gonna cut it into chunks that'll easily go through the mincer. Again, when sausage making, like I say, it's all about temperature. So you don't wanna be ramming massive bits of meat down your mincer. So it has to work harder. Metal on metal over time just heats up and all it will do will smear your fat and you'll end up with a terrible, terrible sausage. So if you cut it into fine dices, big enough to go through and don't rush to get it through, just take your time, you'll end up with the perfect building block for your sausage. Look at that. Now, pork belly, brilliant for sausage making, got the right ratio of fat and lean, as you can see about 70 lean to 30 fat, also pork shoulder. I really don't use much else, just those two cuts. But of course, if you're cutting up your own pig, by all means, use any of the trim and just balance it up with the fatty cuts. And the job, as they say, is a good one. But look at that. That's what you want. You want that layer of fat so it runs through your sausage nearly at the end of this now so beautiful back fat there though. hey white gold so what we'll do then is we'll get our meat through the mincer first but before we do that Here's a little trick, a little tip. If you get your meat and then delicately shower it in your seasoning, it will begin to work on the meat straight away. Just like that. Perfect. Make sure it's completely mixed in. Beautiful. And in the time it took for that to be cut down, you can see already the rusk is nearly ready. Amazing stuff, smells amazing. So we'll give that a few more minutes. So by the time we've got that through the mincer, this will be a cock on. So, meat into the hopper, bowl down, balls out, meat through. And as you can see, flowing nice and easy through the mincer. That's the beauty of 
cutting it into little chunks. We're not stressing the mincer. It's going through sweet as a nut. Beautiful. Clang. Change that to a smaller bowl. <laughs> Get in our rusk. Loving all this vintage kit. I know I say that all the time. Can't help it. So we just give that a little preliminary mix just so we got an even distribution of the rusk and the meat. Now all I need to do then is send that through the mincer again and then we can add our flavorings. So nice and steady then, through the mincer. So there we have then the basic pork sausage recipe. That's what I like to call the mother recipe. That is your classic British banger, your pork, your seasoning, your rusk, your water, now this is a great jumping off point for any flavoured sausages you want to do. It's just a case of your imagination running wild. You can add whatever you want to that. Me, I make pork and leek from this, pork and mustard, obviously pork and wild garlic, pork, wild garlic and chilli, pork, apple, and then instead of the water I use cider. So really, whatever you want to do, there's your mother recipe you take it from there. Right, I'm gonna ditch the mincer and we'll get on and add the wild garlic and the chili. Cause that's what we're here for, man. What a lovely sound that is. So, what we need to do then, with our wild garlic, just get a little bit of nice fresh cold water in there. Where's our leaves? So, just give it a wash. Get any funky, creepy crawlies off there. Whatever's been living in it. And then, we can begin to chop through. Now, you can put as much or as little as you want in. Obviously, put a little in to start with. Form it into a little patty, give it a fry. Then if it needs more, you can always add more, but you can always add more. You cannot take away. So I'm going to go with that bit to start with. Now I don't want it too finely shredded, purely because I like to see it in the sausage. I think it looks really cool. The flecks of green. So I'd say we've got a good handful there. So what I'll do is I'll sprinkle some on. Just like that. Give it a mix. And this will develop overnight once you've put these into skins. So even to you guys and gals out there, you'll know that that needs a bit more. So let's get that in and the beauty of this is it's a free ingredient now if you wanted to you could put this through the mincer a third time but I like to keep this sausage a little coarser obviously the more times you send it through the finer it will get, let's just have a look at that. Oh yeah. So, 
Let's have a look at it. So next, your chilli. Now, if you just look, I'd say that was a teaspoon. Just all over evenly and again mix in. Now these sausages, it's not, like I say, a dick measuring contest. It's not, oh man, I like it really hot. That's not what chilli is about. The chilli, yes, we do like the heat, but we also like the flavour. So, by all means, whack loads in, or if you want to be sensible, just gently build it up, try it, and then adjust accordingly. And as you can see, I think that cock on. And at the same time, we're mixing it, we're creating that bind. Yeah, I'm liking that. It's a thing of beauty. So I'll continue to mix this for another few minutes and I'll just put it on chill. In the meantime, I'm just gonna take a bit of this in and do a trial run. So like I said, a very small amount, just make a little patty, fry it. If you need to add more garlic, add more garlic. If you need to add more chili, add more chili. Okay, so I've just fried off a little test patty. As you can see, a nice distribution of the wild garlic. Let's have a look inside. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about the flavour. If you have a look, you can see nicely distributed. You can see a few chilli flakes in there. And I suppose the proof is in the pudding. Bloody are they good. Mm. All the flavours working perfectly together. You know, like I said, that chilli just at the head, just at the end, a little bit of a bite. You know, you want to be able to enjoy these kind of things. It's not like, you know, I'm harder than you. It's about making a good product. Right, I'm just going to mix that sausage mix a bit more, build up the bind a bit. Obviously, that was just a test patty. Then we'll go over to the table and we'll pipe these beauties out. A owl. Just a little bit of water in your tray, just a bit on your nozzle. Now I'm using super, super thin lamb's casings. Really, really super delicate, ridiculously delicate. But I think they make the best flavored sausage. If I can get these on. Bloody tricky to get on here they are. I don't know if you can see my big bonce in the way. So yeah, once you're on, you're away. Now like any sausage casing, you really don't want to fill it too tight. So really about two thirds full. I know that sounds a bit mad, but with a hand cranker, you can just gauge it. And just gently cranking and letting it come off on its own so I'm not holding it back as if I would a thick sausage then hopefully it will fill nice and evenly and not too full And it is quite an art stuffing into lamb's casings for that reason. As you know, they're, they're so delicate. They're not like pig's intestines, which can take a bit of stick. These will catch you out in the blink of an eye. So just going over then, 
just checking the stuff by that I mean it's not too tight before we start tying them just any dodgy spots just moving the mix along but you've got to be careful doing this because it will split on you <laughs> so as you can see just delicately delicately passing it through my hands as tender as a woman's touch is what the old boys used to say <laughs> oh man then was the days so let's get this some kind of an order there you go nice so we're going to start by making one sausage measuring it off to another turning that measuring that off to another and turning that and then that will give us our starting point so we lift the mix up to it up to it through it twist you start again up to it through it twist up to it through it twist if I can show it you flat up to it through it twist up to it difficult this way the things I go through to put this stuff on camera <laughs> here comes the old soldier so yeah, just up, through, twist, and that one there, as you can see, it's just a little longer, but it needs to be shoved down, so we can tie that off. Cut it with the nearest knife, which is a bread knife, and then just finish that link in there by pressing and there we have the first of our beautiful pork and wild garlic sausages. They're beautiful. Hang them up, let them dry off. What that will do is overnight the mixture will expand fill the casings the casings will dry nice and tight round it that is what you want so there you have it my friends my wonderful wild garlic and chili sausages and a vintage sign because i love it My dear friends, I hope you've enjoyed that episode of the Scott Reed Project. My wonderful forage, wild garlic and chilli sausages. Hands down, one of the tastiest and best sausages I make. Without a doubt, it's just a shame the season is only six weeks long. But hey, you know, you can't have it all. And obviously I haven't been uploading any content for the last couple of days. Or is it weeks? I'm not sure. I've lost track of time. Obviously, what's going on in the world, scary times. You know, I've been putting my butchery skills to better use, uh, freelancing with a few friends, helping them prepare meat, you know, and obviously selling meat. It's just a crazy, crazy time. But we will come out the other end, you know. We are living history, and in years to come, we'll look back, you know, and we'll think, did we really go through that? But, yeah, I don't need to tell you how bad it is. But all we need to do is stay strong, stay safe, keep calm, 
and rock on. And I hope you're all doing okay. Anyway, if you've liked this episode of the SRP, please click subscribe when my face comes up down in that corner. This beautiful face. Also, check me out on my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at the Scott Reed Project. Get on Facebook. Uh, press follow. I can't have no more friends. I'm maxed out, but press follow. You can see me on there. I put all kinds of little things on there. And if you're feeling generous, I will put a PayPal link in the comments if you want to help the channel along, be it a dollar, be it a million dollars, you know, but I won't be offended if you don't want to put nothing. It's cool. We're all in this together. But until next time, my friends, take care and really take care. And I'll see you out on the other side. Stay golden, pony boy. The first thing I'm going to do when all this ends is get my bloody hair cut. Have a look at that. What a barnet. Take care, my friends. It's a first world problem.